Hi everyone, I'm Nicholas Aramuni. Welcome to Userlytics Software. Today, I'm going to be giving you a tutorial on how you can set up a study within the Userlytics platform in just a few simple steps. Let's jump right in. Here on the screen, you're seeing exactly what you'd encounter if you had just logged into your Userlytics account. On the left-hand side, you have different options to choose from, highlight reels, create new study, pause studies, whatever you'd like, but for this purpose, we're off to create a new study. Here, you're given the option between either unmoderated or moderated testing. So whatever you've chosen for your test, you would make a selection and it would bring you on to this very next screen. We're choosing moderated testing for this example. Here is the public name. So the first thing you're going to do is create a name that you, you know your users are going to see when they get the test but something that doesn't necessarily give away exactly what the test is because you want to keep it a bit more, you know, tight lipped. So this is the public facing, this is the internal, and this is what your team might see. So you, perhaps you have a code, you know, of how you structure your examples. Let's say it's, or your tests, let's say it's UL589 and we're calling it the shopping checkout flow users. We're calling it issues just like that. Keeping it a bit more, you know, narrow focused precisely on what we'd be doing to make it easy to see from here. We're going to click and drag, choose how long we want our test to be. So between these three options, 30, 45 or 60 minutes, and then choose the language that we'd like our test to be in. So you have different opportunities here to choose different languages. We're going to stick with English for this example. And just like that, we're up and running and off to the configuration. So here you're seeing what device your participants will be using in order to conduct your test. Are they do, using a desktop, smartphone, or tablet? And then next you're choosing, you know, where your participants are coming from. Are you bringing your own or are you using the user analytics panel, which has 1.5 million global users? Whichever one you choose, you have some fair bit of personalization. If you bring your own participants, you can drop a logo, you know, that shows up on the test. Perhaps, you know, the codes for your brand colors that you can help give it that personal touch. Perhaps you want to customize the welcome text that they'll see, or even direct them to pages when they're welcomed into the test, or perhaps you want to say, thank you for trying, but we're not quite able to take you at this time. However, you want to sort of make that happen. You can, um, and sharing it is, is pretty simple. If you bring your own participants, once you publish your study, you're given a link and you just share it. But if we're going the user analytics panel route here, we're going to customize a bit more. So we want some five participants, something like that. And we're going to run it in Canada and U S perhaps we choose our gender. Perhaps we want people, you know, over the age of 25, but under the age of 50. Whatever that might be. Now, however many details you want to give helps the panel funnel the best possible matches for your test. We can get even more granular by seeking out people who have at least some college experience, perhaps, or make a minimum of, you know, let's say $25,000. Perhaps you even want only single people. So you have this, again, really personalized, customized experience to help ensure that the people you're selecting are, or that are being recruited for you are the best ideal candidates based on how you've scripted your test. And that's it. We've already created, you know, where we want our participants to come from, our study name. We're going to move on to this part. Now I'll note by saying you don't necessarily have to do this part right now. You can always come back and open up slots for participants to, you know, book through sessions at a later time. But because we're here, we'll go ahead and show you now, but just note that you can definitely come back to this. Actually, you can come back to any part of these three activities after you've created your test, just to make sure, you know, touch ups or edits, you don't have to do it all at once. So let's say we want to schedule in, you know, open some slots for our participants to be able to select a time to enter into a study. Let's say we're doing it on Monday and all we have to do is click the time that we'd want a session to be open. We confirm the time, perhaps we invite an observer or maybe some colleagues who will be in a back room where no one can actually see them. And we'll get into the recorder portion in a later video, but it's as simple as adding an email. It'll generate a link for them and voila. So we click hit create. And just like that, click create our times are opening up. And so what will happen is your participants, once they're 
past your screener or you know match the panel the ideal persona they'll be sent a link and they'll be able to see this calendar and be able to choose the times perhaps that they want to get in and do his study so recommendation is to open as many studies as you possibly can you know if you're doing or sorry open times if you've got five participants it might be good to open up about eight sessions just to give that flexibility make sure that you're getting your participants in we usually recommend a 15 minute break between sessions so if you try and schedule them back to back you will get a warning message but we didn't do that in this case so there we go we've opened our sessions we can also sync this to our calendar in case we don't want to you know come back to this platform every time or perhaps check our emails just to see if panelists had had entered into booking a time so a bit more personalization there as well and now we're about to get into the activities so next portion is screener now the screener as you know or you may not know helps you identify the ideal persona for the test that you are conducting so if we want to add a screener we just hit that button on the left hand side you have the ability to choose from a wide variety of industry leading and industry standard questions that you might expect to see on a so, um, sorry in a screener you can also customize these once you've added them but all you have to do is click the add question button and they will simply be added right there to your test here is the first message they'll see and if you want to you can click and drag drop a single choice multiple choice or rating question at the same time you can also just click this button here met with the same options and let's say we want to add you know a single choice question uh, in this question here we want to ask how many times do you buy items online a week and let's say we chose one time and then two times and then three plus times so we've kind of created that distinctness of, of the answers and here just to let you know you can remove or clone the test clone the question anytime you'd like you also have the option to add more or you can randomize options you know so they don't come up in a listed order whatever you'd prefer to do is really up to you so we're just going to go ahead and make this one since we added one more option three times let's go four plus times so let's say that you know we definitely don't want people who shopped only one time so we would go over here and let's say we would create a logic that says if they hit they've only done one time end of screener same thing for two times you know we definitely don't want people who've only shopped and bought online two times we would hit reject my apologies not qualify reject reject let's say we don't mind if they've done it you know done this act action three times but so we'll let them advance but we certainly definitely want people who have shopped four times you know this is the number one thing we're looking for they've shopped four times this is important we would put it right to qualify so the second they select this answer they'd be met with the end of the screener and they'd be in ready to book in some scheduling times with you so just something to keep in mind how you do your logic and also again you have the other alternative of adding multiple choice questions too so just to give you a bit more idea of how you can customize it further and i did forget to mention you can definitely customize the format here too so if you wanted to go up here and you know let's say bold it or make it italics whatever you'd like to do you have that option but let's go ahead and say you know what which clothing items do you typically purchase online and let's say we want to give them a couple options so apples and then we'll say shirts we definitely want some clothing items here pants you know let's say also electronics so a few different um choices that they have here for the multiple choice you have the idea you have the option to select you know let's say we don't mind if they've bought apples they can they can buy apples it's not going to ruin our study so they may select this but we definitely want participants who have done who have bought shirts and pants so they must select and we certainly don't want people for some reason you know people who buy electronics online don't fit in the study we would hit reject and every time they chose number four the person taking the survey would be taken to the end and test over and that is you know a couple examples of how you can customize your test now let's say we've done our screener we want to perhaps qualify or give you know 
personalize the message they'll see if they qualify or perhaps the message they see if they don't qualify. You can totally customize this yourself, but we've got the questions we want for a screener. Head over to now activities, which is the next step. And just like that, we can add some questions. So similar to what you saw in the last example, left-hand side, we've got popular activities that are typically chosen that we've seen over the years people will ask that you could just click and drag, but you'll also see there's other things listed here. You know, there's not just single or multiple choice. We now have net promoter score, card sorting, tree testing. We'll go over these in detail in a different video to give you a breakthrough. But just know that you can now get a bit more granular in what you're asking. So these are the activities your panelists will see or participants will see during the test. So this will be exactly what you've written in your script. And just to give you an example, you know, we clicked and dragged and let's say we were about to take them to a website. Um, so you would say, you know, please take a moment and examine the website without navigating away from the home page. Here, we could just add in a URL. So the second that they got to this question, boom, they're taken to that URL. They wouldn't have to, you know, go looking for it or Google it. It's really convenient, just like that. Perhaps we want to disable screen recording since all things are recorded. Um, maybe they have to put passwords in and we don't want to see them on the screen. So we can make that distinction here by disabling screen, whatever we'd like to do. And again, these same options for you here are to format it. And you can also make this a success failure question as well too. So however you'd like to get into that more, we will do a different time, but just to let you know, you can customize these a step further as we do offer this on the platform. And, you know, in the interest of, of time, let's say, you know, we've listed all our questions, we're ready to go. Our test is ready. We got our info, we've opened times, we know what we want for participants, our screeners in place. Our test is done. We've added in all our script questions and you are ready to go just like that. So you click next, this will take you to a study flow preview. This is gonna be exactly what your participants will see when the test starts, right? This is the script that they'll see. So that question that we just asked, please take a moment, examine the website without navigating away from the homepage. If we had put a URL, it would have popped up right here and our participants would be up and running with a test already. And then they'd move on to our next question and so on and so forth and so on and so forth. And, you know, since that was our last question, it's showing you the submit end of end of test. They'd hit submit, they'd be done. Voila, test is complete. So from here, you would hit a confirmation step. This takes you to a private window, which has your account information. So I'm not going to do that. But for you, you'd hit confirmation step, it would take you to the next page, you'd see your account, and then you could make your distinctions or choices from there based on our, our internal systems. You'd hit confirm and voila, your study would be launched. So thank you for spending time with me and letting me show you exactly how this works. Again, please keep your eyes open for some other videos we'll be doing on some of the more intricacies about not just the questions, but also the capabilities, the highlight reels, the recorders, many things to learn about on the UserLix platform. So looking forward to seeing you again, but in the meantime, wishing you all the best on your UX testing journey. Thank you very much.